Hebrews this morning, the 11th chapter, and the first five verses. Amen. Uh, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. And through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen are not made of the things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, but was found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And I want to add verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And this morning's topic is some can, some don't, some will, and some won't. Amen. Some can, some don't, some will, and some just won't. Amen. Faith is an interesting topic. Because there are so many people who have taken this scripture and they think they got all these explanations for faith and they have examined it, tore it up from the floor up and <laughs> gone forward and gone backwards with it and they can come out with all these great wordy sayings and all these great explanations. But basically what faith really is, faith is the action of what you really believe. It's just that simple. These guys back in these times didn't have to take a course in uh, system theology, systematic theology or hermeneutics or, or anything else uh, to understand the word of God. They just acted by faith. They did what God said. They didn't question it. They didn't think about it. They didn't try to outsmart God because they knew that what God said is what God meant. He didn't mean for you to analyze if he says no, well maybe no don't mean no, no might mean no, in this case no might change over here if he said don't do it, that's exactly what he meant. The problem being with faith is that faith is made up of stuff that you can't see. Most of the time faith deals in areas where you don't even really want to go. Because what you're really hoping is in, 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 in life is many times that I don't have to deal with an area where I'm going to be tested to this degree. These people who are listed in this 11th chapter of Hebrews are listed here for a reason because they had to go through extraordinary circumstances and then by their testimony, uh, uh, what they have testified to or what they said, they proved by their actions. We live in a, a day to day where folks can, uh, on Sunday is when they come and they come to church and they come in to have a good time and they come in to shout and get their praise on and they're coming to worship and praise God. But many times what they have forgotten, if they would look in the Old Testament and see how God dealt with priests and to, to put it in perspective, in case it's not on your mind, we are priests. We are a royal priesthood. And so when the priest went in, if he wasn't clean into the Holy of Holies, amen, they tied a rope around him in case he died while he was in there, and they had to pull him out. I guess if more folks start dying in church on Sunday, maybe they would start living better on Monday. <laughs> That's the only thing I know to tell you. But faith is the substance of things hope for it. So here we are, royal priest for Sunday. We want to put on our royal garments and come into the house of God and celebrate and praise God and give our great testimonies and, and witness to folks and do all this. But really, you know, many times when you look around, you have to ask what kind of faith does a person really possess? Well, when you see folks, when things happen, man, 
get real worried. And it's okay because things can happen that trouble you. But you see folks getting upset over the smallest of things. And it makes you wonder because if this little thing would upset a person to this degree, how can God ever trust them to do good things? It's almost just like if you were in school and you keep failing the first grade test, why should you be passed to the second grade? But the school system, of course, today, they push you through it. That's the problem. Many folks have come through high school and gone all the way through and can't read because they really didn't make, wasn't made to adhere to a standard of learning. But with God, you can try to skip over God, try to skip past God and graduate into faith. But with God, it is impossible to please Him if you don't have faith. And so, you're never going to process, never going to please God unless you have faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Folks go through a lot in this world. They have troubles and it didn't just start with us. I know sometimes we think that our troubles are unique, but the scripture tells us that there's no temptation that has overtaken us, but such is common to man. That is, every person in, uh, goes through something that somebody else has already endured. It may be with different people. It might be in a different form. It may be in a different way, but it's still of the same substance. Uh, things that aggravate us. We don't like things that cause us trouble. We don't like. We don't want anything to rock our world, to get on our nerves. And so in our flesh, we can become agitated. And sometimes it's okay. The scripture does give us license to be angry and sin not. But for many people, they don't know where the Mason-Dixon line is between anger and sin. So it's best if you can not to get mad. It's best to keep control of your emotions and self at all times. And maybe to take a pause before you open your mouth and say something that you will regret. Maybe go somewhere in a corner and cry if you have to. Yeah. Or kick a wall but just don't break your toe and be in a cast on Monday huh? because you hurt yourself on Sunday. <laughs> only thing I can tell y'all this morning is that we understand that people who came before us uh, got a good report. In other words, if, when you was in the classroom, there were people who got good reports and there were folks who got bad reports. Uh, and it seemed like the folks who got good reports weren't the ones that's getting anywhere because I know we used to laugh at the folks who was real good and never got paddles. Uh, I went to school with people who in the whole course of me in school with them, I could never remember them getting paddled. Uh, and I'm sure if they were here today and they were in my place, they would be saying, I went to school with a guy named Messing and it seemed like he probably got paddled almost every day. Uh, see, it's one of them deals. Uh, but the, so you want to have a good report. You want to obtain a good report with God. And the only way that you're going to do that is, is you're going to have to believe that he is. Uh, you're going to have to believe, amen, that he really truly is. Now folks say, I know I believe that God exists. I, I know that God is real. Uh, and yet, hallelujah, you, they, they, don't, they, they must understand that if you want to please Him, uh, it's not just a matter of believing that He exists. Uh, because the devil also believes. Uh, so your testimony, if that's all you've got to testify, uh, is no greater than the testimony of the devil himself. Because he believes that God exists. Because he know, because he deal with him. But, but the thing is, the devil is not pleasing God. And that is what we have got to get to the point of understanding that the most important thing that we have is to please God. But without faith and trust in him, it's impossible to do so. Because you must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, now I'm going to tell you something about this. Uh, most times people uh, are always looking for something. Uh, they're looking for a reward. Uh, and so they get caught up in a trap because they feel like sometimes they've done well for so long. Uh, and they've accomplished this over time. Uh, and yet they're still dealing with the same troubles and, and the same problems and same situations. Uh, and they begin to question themselves uh, and question God uh, and begin to 
murmur. Huh? See, murmuring huh, is a form of sin huh? because what it does is uh, it puts your will uh, over the will of God for you in your life. Huh? When you start to complain, huh, what you are actually saying is, uh, I know what's better for me huh, than you know yourself, God. Huh? I deserve to be here or there huh? and not perceiving that if God really gave you huh, what you did deserve, huh? you'd be already in hell. Huh? And so what has to happen is that we have to understand huh, that we're not in this uh, for reward from God, huh? but we should be in this huh, because we love God. Huh? And one thing I know, huh, in my imperfections, huh, and in all of our imperfections, huh, that if we really love God, huh, God knows that we love Him. Huh? And God understands, hallelujah, huh, that we love Him. Huh? And this is why He forgives us. Huh, and we put God first in our lives. Huh? God will take care of us in the end. Huh? He knows, hallelujah, huh, that sometimes we may run our mouths too much. Huh? Or we may be doing this or doing that. Huh? But if we really love God, huh, our faith huh, will bring us into obedience in the Word of God. Huh? Our faith will make us uh, apologize to God. Uh, our faith will make us uh, see and understand uh, that we need to talk to God uh, and let God know, uh, Lord, we need your help uh, in this situation. Uh, I've got something I can't handle, uh, and I've got to depend on you. Uh, I tried and I failed in my intellect. Uh, I tried and I failed in my emotions. Uh, all the psychology uh, that I know to have, uh, but Lord, I found out uh, that it's short, it's not uh, going to get the job done. Uh, and as we look at uh, what I consider uh, to be one of the greatest chapters in the Bible, uh, the Hall of Fame for the Saints of Faith, uh, as we look in there and see and understand uh, what some of these people have went through, uh, there's one common key uh, that they all possessed, uh, and that was faith. They truly believed that God was great, uh, and it's not just in this praise, wave your hand, uh, wave your hands and clap your hands and stand up and smack somebody's hand and tell them God is great and I got faith. Uh, that's not where it is. Uh, but the key to it is, uh, is can God use you? Can God control you? Uh, can God make you uh, go through uh, when you don't want to go through? Uh, can God trust you time and time again uh, when he looks like he's blessing uh, everybody else around you but you? Uh, and it looks like he's left you uh, over there all by yourself uh, when it be good again to be uh, that your friends are mocking you and talking about you when your family is telling you uh, that you're crazy for keep going through this uh, and it don't make sense uh, for you to endure, uh, for you to subject yourself. Uh, the question is, uh, what is God doing? Uh, it's not what folks say uh, because ultimately uh, they're not the ones that you got to please. Uh, the one you got to please uh, is the one that made you, uh, the one that created you, uh, the one that created you uh, out of nothing. Uh, that's who you got to please. Uh, and this is why uh, you find in the Bible uh, so many examples that God has given uh, of men and women uh, whom he's trusted, uh, whom he's put through, uh, whom he's tested. Uh, many of them have suffered uh, the loss of their lives. Uh, they suffered through uh, the loss of their family members. Uh, and there are folks today uh, who lost family, uh, who had to go through the hardships uh, and the testing trials, uh, who have had to endure uh, the suffering. Uh, but the scripture says, uh, he or he, uh, let me add she, uh, that endure to the end, uh, the same shall be saved. Uh, and it's important for us uh, to understand uh, that faith is uh, the assurance uh, of things hoped for. Uh, its conviction is in uh, the things that you have not seen. Uh, you cannot see uh, the reality of your faith. Uh, you 
cannot see uh, what God is doing, uh, but faith has to be uh, an assurance inside of you. Uh, it has to be uh, that you're confident and convinced. Uh, it has to be that there's no wavering, uh, no vacillating, uh, back and forth. Uh, but on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Uh, Uh, 